Welcome back to Ghost Pirate Entertainment. I'm your host, Kanan Becker, and today we do another deep dive into Tubi. And let's get to the list. Open the door. I Trap the Devil is a 2019 supernatural horror movie. Written, produced, edited, and directed by Josh Lobo in his feature film debut. It stars AJ Bowen, Scott Poitras, and Susan Teresa Burke. A man descends into paranoia after trapping what he believes to be the devil in his basement. What have you done? There is something evil locked behind that door. Please help me. Wow, this movie is so good. I've heard of it for quite a while. I've heard people mention it over the years telling me, hey, you need to check this out and so on. But I just, for whatever reason, never got around to checking it out until this week. And I'm so glad that I did. It is just so well done. Now, you gotta keep in mind, this is very much a slow burn. It really takes its time. It's a mood piece. It's not about the action. It's not about exciting, crazy things happening. It's none of that. It's a dialogue-driven, slow burn, dread-filled kind of film. It little by little just builds this atmosphere and vibe. I love the lighting and the way that it's shot. The whole movie is dark and oppressive and it just feels more and more uncomfortable as it goes. I also really love the simplicity of the way that it's shot and the way that the story is told because it just feels like it's slowly pressing in around you and suffocating you. And the performances are so well done. This is a perfect example of what a small indie filmmaker can do because you could tell there's not a big budget here i mean there is just a couple performers on the screen and there's not a lot else but what they did do is tell a narrative through these performances through the dialogue through the way they respond to each other and just the attention to detail in the little things really make an impact in this the set the way it's decorated it is at christmas time and you can feel that but it's like juxtaposed to this ominous just disturbing feeling that this whole movie has. This is a dramatic, moody, slow burn horror movie that I highly, highly recommend. That small thought is all it takes to lose control. Possessor is a 2020 sci-fi horror movie. Written and directed by Brandon Cronenberg, it stars Andrea Risenborough, Christopher Abbott, and Rosef Sutherland. The story's about an assassin who performs her assignment through possessing the bodies of other individuals, but finds herself fighting to control the body of her current host. Ready? <laughs> been singing the praises of this film ever since I saw it back in 2020. And more and more I have seen people talking about it, but I do think it still flies under the radar a lot more than it should. Because this is one of the best sci-fi horror movies we've seen in the last 10 years. It's creative and futuristic, it's dramatic, and the way that it shows body horror and different sci-fi types of technologies and things like that is futuristic and yet still feels grounded. It feels like it's just a little bit out of reach. It's just not quite where we're at yet. So it's just a little bit into the future, but not so much that it feels fantastical and not like something that you can relate to. But this movie gets violent and gory and graphic and doesn't hold anything back. As much as I've seen people loving on Infinity Pool from this past year, not everybody realizes that Brandon Cronenberg is the son of David Cronenberg, and he also did this film, Possessor. But I just think this movie is badass, and I love the fact that it's available on Tubi for free now, so more people will finally get a chance to check this out. So if you're one of those that have yet to see this, do yourself a favor and make this the next thing that you watch. The 
The Descent is a 2005 British creature feature horror movie. Written and directed by Neil Marshall, it stars Shauna McDonald, Natalie Mendoza, and Alex Reed. A Cavian expedition goes horribly wrong, as explorers become trapped and ultimately pursued by a strange breed of predators. Sarah thinks she saw someone back So what? I don't think I saw someone. I saw someone. No, you heard something and you saw what you wanted to see. It's the dark. It plays tricks on people. This is one of my all-time favorite creature feature horror movies. It is so intense. The design, the way everything looks is so well done. The creatures themselves are badass, but the way this uses that claustrophobic feeling is what really makes this movie to me have so much impact. Because even before the creature element is introduced, it is already horrifying, especially if you're someone that's claustrophobic, because I'm not even claustrophobic, and yet this movie terrified me on that element. You just feel like you can't breathe. The way that it slowly develops and puts you into this situation is really masterfully done. I think this movie is incredible and definitely a must watch for any fan of horror. Found is a 2012 horror movie, written and directed by Scott Shermer. It stars Gavin Bowen, Ethan Philback, and Phyllis Monroe. A bullied and misunderstood boy must grapple with the knowledge that his older brother is a serial killer. My brother keeps a human head in his closet. I hope I don't end up that way. Okay, so up front, I gotta give a big warning about this movie. It is super dark and heavy and really doesn't hold back at all. It's creepy and upsetting, and to be honest, if you get offended easily at all, this is probably not for you, because there isn't very many lines that this movie doesn't cross on some level. But with that being said, I think it's a great movie. It's so well performed, it's well shot, it's interesting and unique, and definitely goes in a lot of directions that surprised me and caught me off guard. So if you're looking for something that's dark and bleak and absolutely fucked up, you should definitely check this one out. Watch the splinter. Don't want to stick you. Here. It's gonna get in here. It's gonna kill it. Splinter is a 2008 body horror movie directed by Toby Wilkins. It stars Shea Wingham, Paulo Constanzo, and Jill Wagner. Trapped in an isolated gas station by a splinter parasite that transforms its still living victims into deadly hosts, a young couple and an escaped convict must find a way to work together. Hello? Oh, sorry, I didn't. Kill me. Ah! What? Ah! Ah! Get this is one of those movies that never seems to get the love that I think it deserves. Because yes, it is a fairly small indie creature feature, but it's unique and it's a world that I wish we would see more of. That's a lot of the reason why I wish this movie would get more attention is just because I would love a sequel or a series or something developed in this world. Because this parasite and the way that it affects people and what happens from there, it's just really entertaining. It just gets brutal and there's a lot I think you could do with this idea. It's well written and even though you're at this isolated location and you just kind of spend the whole movie really at this one spot, it never feels slow, it never feels boring. You're always on the edge of your seat just waiting to see what's gonna happen next. I think this is a real gem and one you should definitely put on your list. I don't want to be sick. My Heart Can't Beat Unless You Tell It To is a 2020 psychological drama horror movie. Written and directed by Jonathan Cortez, it stars Owen Campbell, Patrick Fugit, and Egrid Schramm. The story is about Jesse and her brother Dwight, who care for their little brother who has an unusual illness that forces him to ingest human blood to survive. I thought you said this was a shelter. It is. Looks like a house. This is a bleak, dark, 
uncomfortable movie that has a lot of dread. It has a lot of discomfort and anxiety. It just has this real heavy way of going about things. So it's not a happy movie. It is gonna make you uncomfortable. It's that type of dread filled horror movie. But I think it's really unique because the way it deals with vampirism is just different. It's not like anything really I've seen before. It deals with it like a virus, almost like an HIV kind of thing. But what really makes this movie worth seeing is the performances by this cast. They all do fantastic jobs in this, but especially Owen Campbell. I've become a big fan of his lately because first I saw him in this and he blew me away in this. Then I saw him in Candyland, which is another movie that if you have not seen, it's also available on Tubi and it's another amazing one but he just really embodies these characters that he's performing. And the character he's playing is very different from this and Candyland. They're, they're totally different people, but yet he makes them both feel so believable and likable in their own way. This movie is dark and dramatic and very heavy, but one that I think is so well done and absolutely worth your time. This is a 2019 horror movie written and directed by Joe Bagos. It stars Dora Madison, True Collins, and Jeremy Gardner. A brilliant painter facing the worst creative block of her life turns to anything she can to complete her masterpiece, spiraling into a hallucinatory hellscape of drugs, sex, and murder. I started painting again. I don't know, something came over me and then it all just started pouring out of me. I don't even remember doing it. Like you blacked out? <laughs> like I was possessed. I love this movie and I do understand very much that this is not going to be for everyone. So take what I say with a grain of salt. This just may not be your jam. I really like Joe Bagos. I love his style of making movies. They're very gritty. There's a lot of swearing. There's nudity. There's a lot of things that are just going to rub some people the wrong way. And that's fine. Like any art, right? It's just not going to be for everyone. I've heard a lot of people say that his style of filmmaking reminds them of Rob Zombies, and I can see that. It's brash, it's uncomfortable at times, but I really love the gritty, dirty, uncomfortable way that he goes about it. And of the movies he's made, this is my favorite because I did art. I did visual medium art for a long time, painting, sculpture, and so I can really identify with this character in this and her struggle to get through this creative block. She needs so bad to express this creativity that's in her, but it just won't come out. And so she does whatever it takes to kind of get out of that situation. But without spoiling the twist of this movie, it goes in a unique direction. Like this movie is not exactly what it seems on the surface. And as you follow her, as she spirals out of control, you start to little by little understand what kind of movie you're actually watching. But I think it's badass and Dora Madison gives a brilliant performance in it. It gets gory and graphic and brutal and absolutely a great time and one you should definitely check out. Extraterrestrial is a 2014 Canadian sci-fi horror movie. Directed by Colin Minahan, it stars Brittany Allen, Freddie Stroma, and Melanie Papalia. The plot's about a group of friends who must defend themselves against an alien onslaught. We saw something crash in the woods. What the hell? This is definitely not an airplane. This movie is so much fun. It is wild. It is over the top. It's colorful and creative. The special effects are fantastic. It's humorous in a tongue in cheek kind of way. And sometimes that just kind of flies over the heads of a lot of people. I've recommended this before and especially the ending of this. I'm not going to spoil it, but the ending of it. It's definitely tongue in cheek. And if you're not following, you know, the vibe that this movie's laying down, you're gonna probably be confused by it or not like it or whatever. But if you vibe with this movie, I think you'll 
definitely have fun with it. The cast do a great job in it. It's exciting and action packed. There's just wild things happening right and left. And like I said, if you enjoy that kind of humor, you like it when it gets gory and messy and ooey gooey, this is a fantastic pick. The Hoarder is a 2015 United Kingdom mystery horror thriller. Directed by Matt Wynn, it stars Misha Barton, Robert Nepper, and Emily Eddick. A young woman enters an underground storage facility where she soon finds herself trapped and stalked by a killer. Look at the lights. So this is not a perfect movie. This is one of those movies that I have talked about quite often on the channel where if you pick it apart, you're not going to enjoy it. You just have to kind of go in, check your brain at the door a little bit, grab your popcorn and just have fun with it. Because the idea, the concept of this movie is really unique. I really appreciated the set and just the creative idea behind it in general. Because if you've ever had a storage unit and especially one in one of these huge facilities, which is rows and rows and rows of doors, and especially at night and stuff, it gets creepy. And so the idea behind that, what I think probably started this movie, I think is really cool and a great idea. It also gets gory and some of the kills are fantastic as well. But it does come up a little short with the writing, especially the dialogue. It just doesn't all make sense. There's some holes and flaws with it. Like I said, it's a movie that if you start to pick apart, you're probably not gonna enjoy it. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of the early 2000s, late 90s kind of horror movies where they were cheesy, they were campy. That was kind of what was charming about them and what made them a good time. And so I think this fits in there perfectly with that type of horror movie. So as long as you keep your expectations in check and enjoy it for what it is, just go in to have a good time. I think this is a great pick. Here you go, man. Finish the song. You did. Studio 666 is a 2022 comedy horror movie. Directed by BJ McDonald and based on a story by Dave Grohl. It stars Dave Grohl, Whitney Cummings, and Leslie Grossman. The legendary rock band, the Foo Fighters, move into an Encino mansion steeped in grisly rock and roll history to record their much anticipated 10th album. This is not just a creepy rock and roll house. But it allows spiritual entities to cross into our world. Right, so kind of like what I was saying about the horror where you got to check your brain at the door a bit. You definitely got to do that with this one as well. But this one is a comedy. It's almost comedy first, but it does still have a lot of horror, especially you can see the love that the Food Fighters, especially Dave Grohl, have for horror. There's a lot of Easter eggs and callbacks and different things that you'll recognize as a big fan of horror. But it's very much a silly comedy too. There's a lot of slapstick goofy type of humor to this. This is not a, you know, a real witty type of humor movie. Instead, it's a more almost physical humor, like a fart joke, like a teenage boy kind of humor. And I think this movie shines for two different types of people. One, if you're a big fan of the Foo Fighters, then I think you're gonna absolutely adore this movie because there's a lot of really entertaining dialogue between the band members. Just, they're really charming. And so it's fun to spend an hour plus with this group. But the second thing that this movie really shines at is the horror element, because I do like the Foo Fighters, but I wouldn't say I'm a big fan by any means, but I do love horror and the body horror, the practical effects, all of those things, the gore and the campy kind of quality of that gore that are in this are phenomenal. You could just really tell that they did their homework, that they got a really great team of people to do it because it's so well done. There are some absolutely savage kills in this. Ones that'll make you jump out of your seat, that'll make you laugh and just giggle if you're a big fan of horror like I am, especially if you enjoy practical effects, gory stuff, 1980s type of gore, this movie is a blast. There are also some really great 
visuals in this. When it comes to demonic possession and, and just demons and, and different things like that, like it looks really good. But it's definitely not a movie to take serious by any means. It's just a fun kind of movie, one to throw on that I think is perfect for your Saturday night. So do yourself a favor, pick one of the movies off of this list, grab your popcorn and your candy and enjoy! But that's gonna do it for me today. Thank you so much for checking this out. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell because that is the best way to keep track of this channel and when I post videos like this, and I post videos like this every single week. I also wanna give a huge, massive, enormous thank you to the Ghost Pirate crew, to you guys over on Patreon, and to the channel members over here. You guys absolutely mean the world to me. And if you would like to help support this channel over on Patreon, there's a link down in the description. Or if you want to become a channel member and help support the channel that way, there's a button right down there that says join. But like always, thank you so much for watching. Please crush that like button. And remember guys, horror can be fun. And if you enjoyed this, click right here to watch me talk about 10 more movies that you need to see. And I'll see you guys next time.